Hello children, welcome to chemistry class. So we were doing chapter 2 and in this chapter today we are going to discuss the topic what happens to an acid or base in a water solution. That means children we are going to look the reaction of acid and base in a water solution. Children, in my last class I have said you about the dissociation of acid and dissociation of base. So children, from our last discussion we know that an acid will show acidic character because of its hydrogen ion. And acid can produce hydrogen ion only in the presence of water. In absence of water, an acid cannot produce hydrogen ion. So this one we can look with the help of an activity which is given in our NCRT book in page number 23, activity number 2.9. So for this activity what we have to do children? We have to take a boiling tube. We have to set up an apparatus and for that set up we need a boiling tube then you will need a rubber cork as usual for closing the mouth of the test tube and you will need a small glass delivery tube so children for this activity we need sodium chloride NaCl sodium chloride and number two we need Concentrated sulfuric acid. We need concentrated sulfuric acid and HCl, NaCl for this activity. So, what we will do first of all, we will add like 1 gram of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a salt, we know. So, we will add 1 gram of sodium chloride in the dry boiling tube. Then after adding sodium chloride, we will pour some amount of concentrated sulfuric acid very carefully. So we will add sulfuric acid very carefully. After adding the sulfuric acid, we will close the mouth of the test tube with a rubber cork. Now what will happen? After this, we will see the reaction will start taking place. How? Here, the gas will start forming. Now, next step, as usual, I have said before also that through the rubber cord, we will insert a small glass delivery tube for collecting the gas. Which one will be forming? Because of the reaction between the two reactant. So we know sodium chloride will react with sulfuric acid and as a result we will get sodium sulfate plus HCl gas. So we will get hydrogen chloride. Now this hydrogen chloride gas we will get or we will collect the delivery tube. Now we need to test whether this gas will, sorry, whether this acid will release hydrogen ion in absence of water or not. So for that what we will do? As we know this one is a acid, so we will use blue litmus paper for testing its characteristics. As we are going to test that it is acid will release hydrogen ion or not. So for that purpose what a paper we will use? We will, we will use blue litmus paper. So he will bring one dry blue litmus paper near the delivery tube. So 
This litmus paper is blue in color. You will hold the blue litmus paper near the delivery tube. But what will happen, children? You will see that there will be no change in the color of the litmus paper. The blue litmus paper will not change its color. Actually, what when we are testing for acid, the blue litmus will turn red, is not it? That means what does it prove? It proves that the hydrogen chloride gas which is coming out of the delivery tube is not showing its acidic character. So what we will do now? Now we will wet the blue litmus paper. We will wet it in water or we will moist the blue litmus paper. Now bring the blue litmus paper near the delivery tube. What you will see the blue litmus paper will slowly turn into red color. This one is the moist blue litmus paper. This one is what? Moist blue litmus paper. Moist blue litmus paper means what? The litmus paper has got water molecules in it. So, as soon as the hydrogen gas which comes in contact with the blue litmus paper, the color of the paper turns into red color. So, what does it mean? It means that when the gas was dry, when the litmus paper was dry, that time it could not show its acidic character. The hydrogen chloride gas which was coming out, it could not show its acidic character. But as soon as it comes in contact with the moist litmus paper, what happened? The HCl gas which was coming out, it mixed with the water. It dissolved in the water and it dissociate into that HCl gas it mixed with water and it dissociate into hydronium ion and chloride ion. Now this hydronium ion means you know children what it is hydrogen ion in aqua state. We can write hydronium ion or we can write or else we can write hydrogen ion in aqueous state. So from this activity what we have understood that when hydrogen chloride gas comes in contact, this one is the acid when it comes in contact with water directly it will dissociate into hydronium ion and chloride ion and its acidic character will be shown by changing the color. See. So this one is about the acid. Now what will happen when base will dissolve in water or what will be the reaction between base and water. So when any base, suppose sodium hydroxide, this one is one base, when you will dissolve it in water, it will dissociate or it will produce what? Sodium ion and hydroxyl ion. So this sodium ion, sodium hydroxide, sorry, this one is in solid state, water is in liquid state, you know. So this one will be in aqueous state and this one also will be in aqueous state. So any base, potassium hydroxide, if we will dissolve in water, it will also release potassium ion and hydroxide ion. So any base which one will dissolve in water, always it will release hydroxyl ion children. So from the previous activity we saw that when any acid will come in contact with water, it will dissociate its hydrogen ion or a substance, acidic substance will show its acidic nature only when it will come in contact with water. Until and unless the acid will be in dry condition, it can
cannot produce hydrogen ion and its acidic nature will be not shown. So children, then next what we can say that there are bases which will dissolve in water. All the base will not dissolve in water. I have already said about this in the beginning of the chapter that there are some bases which dissolve in water and those bases are known as alkalis. Then children from here what we can say about the we can say about the neutralization reaction which was discussed earlier that neutralization reaction we know when acid react with base it will form what salt plus water so from here from this reaction also from the previous reaction we get some idea that when any acid will dissolve or when any acid will react with any base then it will always give rise to salt and water and this one this reaction is known as what this reaction is known as neutralization reaction now about the dilution dilution of acid and base from that time i was saying that concentrated acid now you know what is concentrated acid the acid which has less percentage of water in it are called concentrated acid now generally for performing the chemical reaction in the laboratory we need dilute acid so for diluting the acid what we have to do we know dilution of acid or dilution of base is very risky so whenever we will go to dilute any acid or any base we should be always conscious why because it is an exothermic reaction what is exothermic reaction the reaction in which maximum amount of heat will be released so children what we have to do we have to take water in big beaker and drop by drop you are putting acid in the beaker with constant stirring so that it will mix uniformly in that process also heat will be released but amount of heat will be less so children when we are adding acid to water what will happen amount of hydrogen ion in case of acid and if you are diluting base then amount of hydroxyl ion will be reducing and in that case the solution will be known as dilute solution or dilute acid or dilute base so this one always we should keep in mind that while diluting we are not going to put water in acid or water in base but we are going to dilute slowly slowly by putting acid or base in water